peeking me and I ran out of the library, looking around in every direction of Ponyville. She looked at every pony there, mostly looking at their cutie marks. She noticed Spike dragging an empty box towards a recycle can. When he dropped the box, he took out the list and sighed. Pikamina wondered what kind of things he had to do for Twilight. Pikamina started to wander around Ponyville, still looking at the different cutie marks that stood out. Ponies were talking and laughing, hardly noticing Pikamina. Their chatter started to pick up when a sudden fanfare was heard. Every pony gathered by a familiar stage, including Pinkamina. A lot of ponies recognized this stage. It left the scene. About ten ponies, including Pinkamina, stayed and watched. With no effects whatsoever, the great and powerful Trixie appeared on stage, smiling graciously. She walked in the center of the stage, looking at the low amount of audience. Trixie sighed at the memory when she first came to Ponyville. The residents no longer trust her, probably. She remembered Twilight Sparkle as well, and how she showed her up. Trixie came back to Ponyville to regain her reputation. She came back knowing a few tricks that she has been practicing just to show that she knows more magic and that she changed her ways. Hello there, she said, raising her hoof in the air. As most of you might recall, I made an appearance a year ago here in Ponyville. I was the great and powerful Trixie, and as of now, I still am. I came back today to show you all once again what my skills can do. The great and powerful Trixie has new tricks to show, but, but any requests on what magic you would all like to see before I start? Trixie beamed, looking at the audience. Pinkamina blinked before realizing what she was supposed to be doing. She was taking a good look at everyone's cutie marks. Then she saw Trixie's. Pinkamina smiled and come up with a plan. A pony in the audience raised his hoof in uncertainty. Yes, Trixie called him. Well, how about Princess Luna? Princess Celestia isn't letting any pony see her, so I say nay. We should be allowed to see her, he asked, hoping no pony would disagree with him. The other pony started to murmur about it, mostly agreeing. Princess Luna? Are you sure you don't want Celestia instead? She asked, hoping the ponies to change their mind. No, we want Princess Luna! Trixie gulped, nodded her head, and took off her hat. Watch then, as the great and powerful Trixie will show you all what you desire. Princess Luna! Trixie used her magic to highlight an empty space next to her. She then closed her eyes, concentrating on Princess Luna appearing. Every pony knew that magic like this is quite advanced and could possibly take years to master. Trixie had no choice but to show them all what she could do. This was her only chance. All of a sudden, a flash of light appeared, which Trixie was pointing her magic to. Every pony was covering their eyes to avoid being blinded. Once the flash dimmed, they looked over the stage to see nothing but a devastated Trixie. The ponies booed Trixie, upset with her failure of bringing Princess Luna. The audience started to leave the scene, all except Pinkamina. She just sat there blinking, expressionless. Trixie felt like crying after all this time of practicing. She didn't notice Pikamina at all and trotted backstage. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she looked down on the floor. Her mind raced with thoughts of what could have gone wrong and why she failed. Maybe the pony who asked her to make Luna appear knew magic like that was too advanced. Maybe he just planned to see her fail. Before Trixie could start packing her things and leaving Ponyville once and for all, a voice was heard next to her. Where am I, sister? voice said, sounding weak. Trixie blinked her tears off, staring in awe when she turned her head to what she thought she heard. It was Princess Luna. Trixie did an impossible magic spell that some would consider difficult. Trixie smiled, ran back on stage to see if there was any pony left to show Princess Luna to. There was Pinkamina, smiling at Trixie. Trixie had no choice but to show Pinkamina her success. So she brought out Luna with her hoof. Look! It is Princess Luna! God is in the night! Luna was shaking, still not used to the new environment she was in. She looked at Pinkamina, who continued to smile. I want to go back, back with my sister, Luna whispered to herself. Trixie stayed a distance away from the princess, a little friend that she used to be Nightmare Moon. Still, she was weak and no longer the pony she used to be. Pinkamina trotted towards the stage, not losing eye contact with either of the cutie marks. Everything was going so well since she knew what she needed to do. It was almost sundown in Ponyville, and now most of the ponies were finishing up work, all packing their things to get home. 
No pony noticed Trixie bringing back Princess Luna at all, or that Princess Luna was standing there, afraid. Pikamina clapped her hooves together, smiling wide as she did. Trixie bowed down, satisfied with her praise. Thank you, thank you. You know, Pikamina said, it's great that you're here. You should probably touch up on your magic, though. There's some books over at the library that can help you out. What do you say? Trixie looked at Pikamina, unsure. It could help me? What do you mean by that? I'm already in great. Oh, but you could be the best. How do you think Celestia is so awesome with her magic skills? She read those books up at the library. Trixie smiled and nodded. She dropped herself down from the stage, facing Pinkamina. Pinkamina averted her eyes to Luna, giving her a look to join them. Luna was surprised on how she obeyed Pinkamina so well. I'll take that as a yes. Come on, no time to spare. Pinkamina led the two towards the library. The tree was even darker than before she left. Trixie narrowed the eyes to the tree, remembering if it looked brighter before. Princess Luna's thoughts were scattered around her mind. She couldn't think clearly. Why was she following them anyways? They entered the library, with Pinkamina leading the way. The library was even messier, with more books on the floor and ink all around the walls of the library. Luna looked around, horrified at the condition the library was in. I think I should be leaving. My sister will be worried if I wasn't home. Beginning me interrupted Luna's sentence, laughing maniacally. Twilight! She screamed. Twilight ran into the entrance of the library with dried up ink on her muzzle and body. Twilight's horn was now glowing, indicating that she was using her magic. Her magic was spread around the whole entire library, making a barrier around it. Luna tried using her own magic to unlock it, poking Trixie with her hoof to help her. Twilight continued gripping the barrier, trying to make it strong. Pikamina quickly ran to a yellow statue of a horse's head. She instantly gripped it with her hooves and threw it at Trixie's head. Trixie stopped using her magic and fell to the ground unconscious. Luna screamed, feeling weak with her magic. Twilight's magic was too much for Luna to handle, making her body fragile. Her eyes were closing, and her magic was stopping. Before Princess Luna knew it, she fell to the ground, next to Trixie, knocked out cold. The last thing she heard was the hysteric laughter of Pinkamina in Twilight. Tracy screamed in agony once she regained consciousness. She opened her eyes, seeing a bloody Pinkamina with a hacksaw and a horn. Her horn. Oh, I hope you don't mind, Pinkamina stated. I went in and started already. I love hacking up horns. Tracy started to pan hysterically while seeing her horn. She was laid on the ground with braces holding her front and back close apart. Tracy looked at Pinkamina's head, seeing a cracked skull with dark blue horn. It looked very familiar. Pinkamina noticed Trixie staring, which made her giggle. I see you like my little accessory. <laughs> Me and Twilight decided to start with royalty first. Princess Luna was a fun one to do. Too bad you were sleeping the whole entire time. Pinkamina grabbed a scalpel, bringing Trixie's attention to it. Trixie started to breathe hysterically when Pinkamina started to get close to her right flank. She tried to pull away, but no matter how hard she tried, the braces held her tight. She felt a burning pain on the right side of her flank. She screamed in agony, feeling the sharp knife peeling off her flesh. Trixie decided to avoid looking in the direction Pinkman was cutting and looked the other way. She saw Twilight with a jar in her mouth that had her kitty mark painted on it. Twilight was covered in a massive amount of blood. She smiled when she saw Trixie staring at her. What are you doing, this? <laughs> You hate Luna and I that much? Trixie sobbed. Twilight twitched her ear and dropped the jar, opening up with her hoof. Of course I don't hate you, nor Princess Luna. It's just that it's just that your kitty had to deal with these books that were destroyed earlier today. You know, the book covers. It was Pinky's idea to use sin from your skin and cutie mark. Twilight then used her magic to levitate the blood pouring out of Trixie's right flank into the jar. Trixie was lightheaded when seeing her own blood in front of her. Pinkamina finished cutting the right cutie mark, smiling as she showed Trixie the scythe skin. Trixie began to sob even harder, her vision blurred with tears. Pinkamina passed the scalpel to Twilight while she grabbed the butcher's knife. Twilight tightly gripped the scalpel and started to cut up Trixie's left cutie mark on her flank while Pinkamina was about to slice her torso vertically. Now stay still, Trix. We don't want to make a bigger mess. Pinkamina laughed. No, no, please! 
Pinky made it place the knife down on Trixie's chest and then pressed hard. Trixie's mouth was spilling out blood, making a gurgling scream. The sharp knife that was piercing through his skin was now making its way down Trixie's body. The flaps of the skin opened, and her organs were now visible. Twilight finished cutting up Trixie's left cubie mark and placed it next to her. She used her magic once more to levitate the blood into the jar. Peaky Mina grabbed the bucket and started to look around Trixie's organs. She grabbed her huge intestines and separated it from her body. She continued to do this with the other organs and placed it into a bucket. Trixie slowly started to die from blood loss, feeling cold and fragile. Peaky Mina smiled when she saw Trixie's rib cage and spine. With no flare, she gripped the spine with her four hooves and started to pull it out. Trissy gave a feeble scream. She had no energy to scream loud. Pikamina pulled harder and harder to no use. <coughs> Twilight, can you help me out? Pikamina asked, now standing on her back hooves. Twilight used her magic to grab the spine and pull it out Pikamina's direction. Trixie's scream was now cut. Pikamina fell on the ground on her back with the end of the spine in her mouth. She popped it out and saw that the spine was attached to Trixie's skull, who was now dead. Pikamina grabbed her hacksaw and disconnected the spine with the skull. Twilight carefully once again levitated the blood from Trixie into the jar. It was done. Trixie and Princess Luna were killed, and they have their blood, bones, and skin. Twilight grabbed a jar that was filled with blood and placed it on the table. The whole entire time they were in Twilight's basement, where her laboratory was, Twilight faced Pinkamina and blush. I had fun. Twilight smiled. Me too. Pinkamina smiled bashfully. Hey, Pinky. Yeah? I think I love you. This made Pinkamina blush insanely. Her smile was bright and she got walked up to Twilight quickly and kissed her. After Twilight broke the kiss, she smiled at Pinkamina. Let's make the books together.